and apparently I have permission to hit the button. I have Katarina's permission because she said hit the button, Dave. So we're broadcasting live now. The first of uh, TSEC 2016 episode called A Year of Discovery. Because um, that's just what this shit's going to be. At, um, you know, <clears throat> around near the end of 2014, I said the year 2015 is going to be a year of action. And then, like, not only has it been, but all through 2015, I have just seen all these people. It's year of action, year of action, year of action. And all these people who most likely have never watched my stuff, don't even know why I exist, you know, but yet they're all calling it the same thing. That's cool. So, you know, for this, this upcoming year, I just have a feeling it's going to be the year of discovery. Because, you know, 2015 is also, has also been known as the year that everyone was offended by everything. So that was kind of a permission slip for the silence majority to finally speak up and say, hey, you know, those losers don't represent us. So that was kind of definitely an action year. So this year has, has already been working out to be, you know, a year of discovery, even though we're like three days in and even like to the, the last week of, of 2015, because I know I've been going for all sorts of personal discoveries, and so is Katarina, and so is Rich, and so is everybody I know, and even on, on the global stage, things seem to start to be shifting more discovery-oriented, more about what we're finding out and what we're learning about what we're finding out, rather than sitting there all butthurt, like, so-and-so said poopy, you know. This is definitely going to be the year of discovery. So I think we'll start with Katarina, because she's on limited time. Um, Katarina, how's your year of discovery been? What have you been discovering? You know, I hadn't actually thought about it in terms of that until you just said that. Um, I thought that 2016 was going to be the year of action, because you said it was going to be the year of action on steroids, and you've been saying that for the past couple months. So I guess action on steroids is discovery because, you know, action in just any general direction is just action, but discovery is guided action and action that's actually purposeful. So uh, this year I have been, this year, <laughs> these three past days, it's been a very enjoyable experience for me. Um, I feel like last year for me personally was a year of action, but it was more like courageous action. And this year of 2016 is turning into be a bit more of a year of joyful action. So discovery, newness, wonderment, um, excitement, that's kind of the qualities of discovery that I find uh, to be, you know, more of the enjoyable aspects of it rather than like arduous and action and you gotta like keep going and plug along and that was what my 2015 was more so about. So uh, as far as my current year of being a year of discovery, uh, I just moved to Hawaii. I'm discovering new places. I'm seeing new things. Um, in general, I'm discovering new things about myself and where I'm going in the future and planning for that and dreaming into that and in general it, it feels just more like joyful action. Yeah, I think the consequences of action is discovery, one would imagine so anyway. <clears throat> and I find it interesting that late 2015 um, was the, the you know, I think it was October 21st, 2015, the only day ever that's going to exist that is the official Back to the Future Day. And they had um, the doc do do a quick little video. I tried that uploaded on DeviantArt, but the doc did a quick little video like, well, not everything might have turned out exactly uh, the way we thought it was going to be, but um, your future hasn't been written yet. It is what you make of it. I think that's that's really an important message, um, you know, for these days now. Because, you know, even uh, like you said to me in a private conversation a bit earlier, sometimes things of the world seem kind of overwhelming, and they don't, they don't really have to. Because, like, you know, the butthurt baby powers who assume they be want us to think that 
we're 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 just trapped in this that or whatever. When when really it's what Doc Brown said. The future really is you know what we decide to make of it. You know we are the pebble cast to the middle of of the pond, and no one can stop those ripples. You know. We're, we're, that's just the physics of it. We're going to be making the ripple, ripples, and no one can stop it. I don't care how how many nuclear weapons or ISIS members you have out there. No one can stop your ripples. That stone goes to the center of the pond. The ripples go out. So it's a matter of what kind of ripples do we want to make? Do we want to make the ripples that are like, oh my god, fear, doom, gloom, blah, 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 or do we want to look at world events as an opportunity to to really be the change, to, to really understand the paradigms behind what's going on? Because all these people are humans. Whether you're talking about, you know, Obama or ISIS or whoever, all these people are humans. We tend to forget that. We focus so much on 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 titles and constructs and and oh that that has a fancy name, so that must mean something is above me and out of my reach. Ooh, quantum physics, that has a fancy name. I could never understand that. Blah blah blah. And I I think we need to start realizing more that regardless of what position someone's in or what titles they have or whether they're an international terrorist or they have a PhD in quantum physics or what the fuck they are, first and foremost, they are human. And all humans are going through the same processes right now, the same processes of shift in an ever-changing frickin' world. You know, we're starting to face that the the old idea of, oh, the world has always been as it was and it will always be the same, but that's a bullshit idea. We are in a constant accelerated change. I mean, look at even in the last five, ten years, just technology alone. You know, we go from uh, from semi but not really smartphones that are just, you know, clunky LCD things that don't do much. And now, like, they, they, the phones are practically a computer in and of themselves, and they've got a camera. And so, so I mean, you know, you've got, you've got all this technological change that has revolutionized the world even in the last 10 years, and that is just starting to move forward. you got things like TSU that are, that are changing... The way we look at social media, the idea that you know, um, maybe if we share with with the user base, then that's going to be better for everybody. And then people like Zuckerberg have a fit about that. No, I want my nomination and control. Yeah. Just like all of us are facing things that we're having our own little internal baby fits about when we see that we've held on to certain dysfunctional paradigms for so long and we're presented with opportunities in front of us to see that we don't have to stay to this to those those have been weighing us down and we can break free from that and we can expand so Katarina or Richard hello nose goes do what your turn, Rich. <laughs> Richard. Richard. Kind of looks like a mutated zombie from where he's sitting right now. His face looks like it's just an amorphous blob. Yeah, did he get kicked off or something? I don't know, but he looks he's kind like of like the devil. Yeah, it's like, it looks like his feed just, like, froze, like... I know, but, like, where it froze, doesn't he kind of look like Satan? <laughs> <laughs> like, he has, like, a little tiny, like, little point thing on the top of his head, and on, he's Skype. all red. The I'm beard sorry. goatee. Oh, and now his Skype just went from green to yellow, which means he might have gotten kicked off of Skype as well. Hmm. So, Pretty. I guess he'll be, he'll be rejoining us like as as soon as he is able, I would imagine. But I think something might have just froze up on his end. So I guess by default, you'll have to continue the thought. Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah. I think it's funny how Google Hangouts and the things that you do on them, your little PSEC Hangouts and such, I like how the, the glitches and the moments of complete interruption are just as much a part of the episode as the actual train of thought. Because, you know, it, it springs like forth all of these funny jokes and 
uh, insights and newnesses and nuances of observation. <laughs> Satan has left the hangout. <laughs> exactly, exactly, just like that. <laughs> it's as much comedy hour as it is education. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I know that lately um, you've been going through facing a lot of stuff and really growing a lot as a as a person from it. I know, um, <clears throat> you know, even just like <clears throat> within this move from Texas to Hawaii, there's been a lot of realizations in that as far as, um, you know, what you've been cycling in and then wanting to move out of and the process of moving out of that and and seeing that, oh, I don't have to wait for this person or that thing or that event or, or whatever, that I can just go forward with what I want to do and anybody who's interested will just be moving forward with me and that's fine. Because I know there was a lot of cases you mentioned to where, um, you know, you were waiting for other people to make the first moves and, and they were waiting for you and it was just this const, constant dance of doing nothing. Mm -hmm. We are both waiting, you know, waiting for each other. And, you know, so you've kind of realized, oh, I don't, I don't need to dance in that dance anymore. I can just move forward and whoever wants to move forward with me can. That's cool. So you yeah, don't have to and the interesting thing about that is when you move forward and you're doing the thing that you want to do, regardless of who wants to do it with you, the people who you're dancing around with are going to just fall off. And I actually had a, a situation like that happen today because I had this um, monthly mastermind group that I was I started up last January, and you know for a couple of months until July we were very cohesive, and then people just started to kind of like split off because of their own different life cir circumstances and situations. But it hadn't been like announced, you know, like, hey, this isn't really fitting for me anymore, or hey, let's disband this, or hey, let's, let's move on until just today, actually. And, you know, one of the members spoke up and was like, hey, um, what's going on here? You know, what are we doing? And and I was just so happy about that because she, she spoke what was on my mind. And it was such a loving, gentle way of moving out of that and moving into new things that and not not letting yourself be limited by the things that you once agreed upon in the past. Because I feel like as you're on this journey of growth and development and expansion, there will be different things that you once agreed to and different things that was once a fit for you that no longer are anymore. And that's okay. Cause you know, we're the nature of change is that we no longer fit into the same little box that we once did. So our ideas and our beliefs and our desires are all morphing and expanding. And so are the things that we, you know, the things that we're party to. So this little group no longer was fitting for me. And poof, it's all gone. And some friendships that I had back in Texas, they no, were no longer fitting for me. So poof, they're gone. And now I have more room, more room to grow and more room to expand. And, and even, even in business, you know, there were some things that just weren't working for me anymore. And so I was just like, ah, you know, time to grow. Poof. Yeah, and within within that growth, there's also a lot of contrast too, like both internal and external. Like, um, for one one example, like, um, and I was just about to mention Richard's name, and here he is. Ta-da! For one example of contrast through growth, um, Richard has a, a DeviantArt group called NASA Headquarters, and that's been expanding really good. What? I was gonna start, and then the internet. Totally drop me out like a. It's okay. So it was I perfect. A, yeah, we've been water. having a little bit of audio distortion here, but that's understandable. The digital attack map right now is lit up like a fucking Christmas tree. So like. I, all uh, I, yeah, I had I had to go I had to go re I had to go restart my router and everything. I had to completely shut that thing off and power it back on and wait and then mess with my connection and yeah. It's all um, right. But anyway, um, as I was the NASA going, NASA group, Rich's NASA group. Uh, as I, was, I, was, I was just going to mention that's been expanding, and now he's been made um, 
official hey, founder of controversy. Hey, 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 hey. Can I say it, please? Thank you. He wants to shine his light. I wanted to, I wanted to say it. I don't, I don't need to have you speaking for me. I, wanted Fine, to say I, something. I was, just going I was to about to say something, and then the internet dropped, so let me speak, please. Thank Fine. You. Anyway. I'm feeling triggered today. He's just yeah, feeling I'm, sovereign. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of pissed off that my internet connection dropped. That's all. Anyway, as I was going to say, 2016 has definitely been what I would call a year of discovery in one of the highest regards. Um, never actually gotten to go do something new, like on New Year's Day at all. But this year, it's been different, and I got to go mountain skiing up in the mountains for the first time ever, which cool. was really cool. Got to ski in nine-degree weather with blowing snow in my face, and not blowing snow as in it was snowing, but like it was probably 20 or 35 mile an hour winds up at the top, maybe even stronger than that, and it was blowing all that nice powdery snow, and it, it was it was really cool. It was It was amazing. And, you know, I saw all the mountains around me, saw the horizon, saw, um, you know, the Cascade Mountain Range, the volcanoes going, you know, hundreds of miles in either direction. And it was just really kind of cool to be up at the top of a mountain and just kind of looking around, really kind of signified, like, year of discovery. You know, you're at the top of the mountain, you're seeing the horizon around you, the horizon is, you know, and then there's that curiosity when you're up there looking around and seeing the horizon. You, you kind of get this this urge to just kind of reach out and almost you want to touch it. You want to touch the horizon. You want to see what's on the other side of the horizon. You know, and to me that was kind of just a real big, it, just a real symbol of what the year of discovery is all about. And I know. Not only that, you know, I know. I want to touch it. When, when, when Crimson Flake insults me, I just want to touch it. Hmm. <laughs> I'll get I'll get I'll get to Mr. Nutcase Flake here in a minute. Let me let me talk about this beautiful picture that I'm painting here with a brush, please. I don't need to have I don't need to have the canvas spoiled with red flakes. But um anyway. Yeah, and the sun the sun was out, it was really nice. It was the sky was as clear as it could be. There was not a cloud in the sky. It was just absolutely amazing. It was gorgeous. And it's the first time I've actually been up at the top of one of the local skiing resort areas. So it was really it was really awesome. It was really truly what you would call the year of discovery. You know, a real kickoff to the start of a year of discovery. It was just incredible. It was amazing. You know, can't wait to go back. Can't wait, <laughs> Dave. Nice painting, or whoever said that. I think it was Dave. Nerdy is painting in the background. He's such a troll. Yeah, <laughs> I said that. Uh, oui, oui. Let me yeah. put some titanium white. This is actually, uh, this is actually one uh, one of my um, my ex girlfriend's paint brushes that she gave me for whatever reason. She's actually. <laughs> I saw this laying around. You mentioned you want to paint, so I decided to just be like a little mime troll here and just start going. I should get some titanium white and put it up here into the corner. Kind of like Bob Ross. He's like, I'm going to put some little pretty clouds up here in the corner. Now you would make such a seat. great Bob Ross. You got the beard going already. You just need the afro. <laughs> yeah. Afro and a big old freaking comb. That's it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Bob Ross is pretty cool. But, I mean, anyway, you know, I, I just thought it was really, I, I was thinking about that when I was up there. I was like, okay, January 1st, 2016, here I am doing something I've never done before on Mount Ashland, you know, in southern Oregon. Here it is, seeing scenery from an altitude that I haven't seen before very many times, you know. Um, so, I mean, it was just really, it was really cool. And not only that, we're going to, me and my uh, female friend, Brianna, we're going to be doing that many more times this year. We're gonna, not only going to be going to Mount Ashland at some point again, but we're probably going to be going to some of the other ski resorts in the area. There's another one, another hour, hour or so south of that, um, called Mount Shasta. And you can see, you can even see Mount Shasta from Mount Ashland, but 
you know, they've got a big, nice ski resort and stuff up there. So, you know, here I am, 2016, learning something new, year of discovery, discovering something that, you know, I haven't done before, but I've always wanted to do, but here it is. Very so, nice. You know, and then, and then, you know, in the virtual world, of course, you know, I go from having a huge ass group, as Dave was just stating, and then, you know, upgrading that to super within the last year, and, you know, it's been growing ever so slightly over given periods of time, and then all of a sudden, you know, the, like last month, not even a couple of weeks ago, um, the founder of Controversy Inc. by the name of Level Zero Hero um, said he was quitting DA for, you know, reasons due to work, school, college, you know, life in general, and he just said he was going to give up his founder position, so he said he was accepting applications, so I tested fate submitted an application, gave the reasons why as to why I would be a good founder, and I got the position. Fuck yeah! To the great, to the great d delight of many and to the quibbling sufferings of a few um, light switch, insane-minded communist flakes out there whose names will be unmentioned. Oh, not to, um, not, don't, let's not forget to uh, flip switch crazy pants. Yeah, that's why I said light switch. As in flip switch. Flip switch crazy. Got, 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 the, got the old light switch in the back of the head, you know. That, babbling that, was, that was actually funny head. when one time someone sent me a private note asking me, and I quote, what the hell is up with flip switch crazy pants? And I'm just like, LOL, I've never heard of referred to that before, but it fits. Flip switch crazy pants. <laughs> Communist smart mouth flake. I'm going to ban you from Beagle Shield because my butts hurt. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny, but, you know, those two people especially, once once Rich got the founder position, they were fucking livid. And the fact that, you know, me and our friend Mike were also put into co-founder positions um, really didn't help either of them feel any better because um, I, I know Crimson Flake doesn't like Mike too much and... I don't really know if um, if Crazy Pants has an opinion on Mike one way or the other, but the, the whole, you know, all the ingredients coming together to form this cake really has them triggered, and they've been they've been trying to, like, you know, post all, all this, you know, this crazy stupid stuff that's just equivalent to, like, nya nya poo poo, you're stupid, <laughs> you know, and we're just laughing our ass, asses off, like, why do they actually think this bothers us? This is freaking hilarious. I've been just having, ha having, having so much fun. Like you know, um, Flake is has just been you know when I post a journal in there or whatever, he'll he'll comment like, oh, you're you're a creep and a pervert, or you know, insert all sorts of random stuff here. And he's like, he's like, oh, and 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 you like featuring your own comments and blah blah blah. And I'm like. Nah, I prefer to feature yours because they're hotter than a brony in a woofing farm. And then he's just he's just like, oh, blah, 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 blah. and then I'm like, your replies are so hot, I'm touching myself. And he like doesn't even like know how to respond. It's fucking okay. great. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, he's just amusing the shit out of me, and I'm just like just playfully being a troll back, and it's like. He's just sitting there like, why is he getting mad? Um, not getting Sorry, guys. I don't really care about your DA wars. Yeah. Oh, it's not a war. It's just, I'm talking about the contrast. It's just, it's just the idea that whenever there's positive expansion, there's always going to be that negative contrast that comes with it. And we have a choice. We can either feel victimized by that, or we can just laugh at it and just, you know, see the humor value in it for what it is and just, you know, move in the direction that, you know, we want to move in instead of, you know, feeling all, all victimized. And, you know, especially for somebody who's more new agey, God, if they encountered, you know, people like Flake or Crazy Pants, they'd be like, oh, my God, the quantum mirror is reflecting to me that I'm not letting go of this belief system. Oh, I have to mind my thoughts. My thoughts are creating my reality. Ah! And they just go into, like, this neurotic spin over that. As I'm sure you've experienced plenty of times, Katarina, dealing with uh, people who are like that. Mm-hmm. I like your LED lights over there. Candles. Oh, yeah, I got LED candles over here, and then just regular LED lights over there. Mm-hmm. 
I know you have some LED cam. They're not on right now. They come on at nighttime. Obviously not on right now, but I'm just saying I know you have some in your possession. Mm. I do. You know, Rich, on I did something new too on New Year's Eve. Now that I think about it, it was actually on New Year's Eve Eve, not not on uh, Christmas, not Christmas, but New Year's Day. Um, did I tell you guys the story about that, the the tour that we went on? I'm not sure. It's not ringing any bells. Okay, so Paul applied for this one place. Um, called Roberts Hawaii. They're like a tour company because, you know, he has a CDL and he can drive, you know, big things. And he applied to a Roberts Hawaii and they ended up wanting him to go um, be interviewed for their higher-end luxury premier travel company called Hoku. Oh, I remember... Um, about this, but continue. Yeah, and so what happened was when he was in the interview, um, they were trying to negotiate salary and stuff like that, and and Paul was just like, "Nah, I'm not gonna take that. That's a little too low. That's I'm not used to making that little." And the guy was like, "Well, you make tips," and Paul was like, "Show me." And so the guy like ended up putting him on a luxury eco tour, like their top end one that they he wanted the guy wanted him to do. And he was like, well, you got to take my wife, too, because, you know, she won't be happy if, if I'm the only one going. And, <laughs> and then so he, he basically, like, manifested, like, two free tickets to their most expensive, highest-end uh, luxury eco-tours. And so that was, like, pretty fucking cool. Like, the, the very next day we're on this awesome tour around Oahu, like, seeing all of these really, really beautiful spots and... And I saw that picture of you and him with like all that temple shit in the background. Yeah, the Bowdoin Temple. But that's uh, that's pretty fucking cool. That was on the tour. That was on the tour. It was like an eight-hour tour, and we didn't pay a fucking dime for it. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't you, didn't you like score a new job recently that you were you were? Yeah, scared? yeah. He ended up taking a different job and it pays like double of what he was making in Austin, which is really fucking cool. So. Our bills are staying the same, and his income doubled, so... Fuck yeah! I mean, I know people tend to feel victimized by the economy or whatever, but even so, it's like, always go for the jobs you love. Otherwise, like, even even if you get a job, like, what's the, what's the point if you're constantly miserable in it? You know, it was really funny, because we were told, you know, coming to Hawaii, that, oh my god, there's no work over there, it's going to be so hard, blah, 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 and... You know, we're seeing nothing but jobs. There's actually ads in the, the local Hawaii newspaper saying, like, so many jobs, too many jobs, employers looking for employer for employees and nobody's working. And the thing is, is because the unemployment rate uh, in Hawaii is so high, there's so many people on government assistance. But that's not necessarily because there's no jobs. It's because there's a lot of lazy people here. It's Hawaii. Nobody wants to work. Like they, they would rather like suck on government teats and like do nothing. You know what I mean? So yeah. the but thing I, is, I guess hmm? the uh, the point I was trying to make is that that people are so focused on oh it's a bad economy and just get a job at all that you know if you ask them hey um, I'll give you this job but it's going to be very very bad for your health it's going to cut your lifespan short it's going to be really nasty do you want it they'd probably say no but what they mm -hmm. don't realize is that if you're in a state of being constantly miserable that's literally biologically what you're doing to your cells you've got all this corrosive stress hormone running through you 24 7 so on oh, and so yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is a really chill job that he manifested I mean he used to work jobs that were like that that were really difficult uh, you know, because he engineered and manu manufactured, um, like, aerospace parts. He was a machinist for that, and so he had to hold, like, one, ta one thousandth of an inch, like, and, you know, parts cost millions and millions of dollars, and, you know, yeah. it was crazy. So there was a lot of stress on him for that, but, you know, this this job he manifested is, um, you, know, he, you know, CNC, CNC yeah. and G-code and stuff yeah. like that. My so he's... 
my best friend from from way back in the day, Sebastian Glad. Um, he owns a company with his dad out of Glendale, Arizona, called SMT Machining. So yeah, um, he's told me like all <laughs> all about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so Paul Paul is just doing the CNC programming on like two D counters and stuff like that. Like it's super simple. It's way way more simple than anything he's ever done before. And he's this is the job that's paying him the most that he's ever been paid. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And I I also I also want to point out because you keep using the word um, manifesting, and I just want to want to make sure people have the correct context. Um, in my view manifesting is not only when you put your attention to something but action also follows it like if you sit there and meditate all day but do nothing else that's not manifesting but if you're meditating on something and you align with an opportunity and then you take action on that opportunity and you go for it you know then all actions have consequences a lot of people think they could just sit there and, and meditate and you know raise their frequency and reality is just going to shift around them and it doesn't quite work like that. They have to actually take the tools they are given and put, you know, forward action into it. And yeah. that's exactly what Paul did. He didn't just settle for whatever. He's no, like, no, he didn't. He, this is he what I'm was, working on. That. Yeah, he he searched Craigslist and he was searching the job postings and stuff like that. And this was the only CNC position available, and that was that's his background. That's what he was trained in. Yeah. Um, but it was the only one available on the island, and that told him something. It told him that there's not a lot of uh, skilled workers here, so he um, was able to get that job. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. It was like he just went for what he wanted. Yeah, and it was the only one. So he said he he said he intended to God, the universe, big you, whatever you want to call it. He said. Um, you know, make it just jump off the page to me. And it was the only one available. Mm -hmm. So that was his intention, and it was that one. And so he applied for that, and that's one one he got. Well, he actually got two jobs, but, you know, this is the one he chose. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lesson I've been having to learn ongoing as well, because there's so many old belief systems I've been dealing with based on what I had always been used to. And, you know, a lot of people are in that boat reaffirming with their justification, oh, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, I shouldn't even bother going in that direction because this is the way it's always been, this is what I've always gotten, blah, 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 blah. And so they're not, they're not even thinking they're capable of taking the action to move forward, much less actually doing it. They're in this, this state of, oh, why should I bother, I'm not good enough, I shouldn't, da, da, da. When a lot of things are just, it's so, it's so simple to move, to move forward, like, one example I always use, and I know it's one that triggers you a little bit and drives you crazy sometimes, but TSU, it's such a, it's such a simple thing, and yeah, it's one of those Rome wasn't built in a day sort of thing, but like you know, I'm making on it like every couple of days I'm making a dollar. When I first started out, I was you know it might have taken me a few weeks to make a dollar, and it's just been this slow but exponential upswing. So like a few months from now. It'll probably go from a dollar every two days to a dollar a day, and then it'll continue from there. Two dollars a day, three dollars a day, four dollars a day. And what I'm doing isn't hard. I'm not spending oodles and oodles of time on it. I mean, it's just posting shit for fuck's sake. It's an even more simple interface than than Facebook. But a lot of people have this this paradigm of seeing time as the enemy, and they're thinking, oh, if it's if it's that simple, but it takes time. No, that's that's too easy. That that couldn't be. It's only real if it's suffering and misery and struggle. And no, nothing can ever be easy. So I'm just sitting here like, all right, well, fine. You know, y'all can watch me go through my processes and make more and more money as time goes on. Well, the rest of you are just sitting there like, why aren't I making anything? Well, I think the thing is, is because it's what you're aligned with, Dave. I mean, a lot of people, they need to find what they're aligned with, and, and that is one of the most important things, is if one thing works for you and then something that works for somebody else, cool, go with what works for you and, and go in that direction. I think the important thing is, is you know, somebody... I, I fell into this trap all the time, systems of other people's that I was trying to adhere myself to, and it wasn't following the thing that was calling me in my heart. And so for Paul, I, I encouraged him, you know, hey, do what you want to do and go follow your heart. And the same for me. Go what do what you want to do and follow your heart. And 
And when I you're think, doing that, you're drawn towards the thing that's going to bring you the success. I also think that a big a big part of you know the trap that that you're talking about there too is people tend to put the tools on so much of a pedestal and that's why they think that they have to go about things in a certain way this protocol that procedure drive themselves neurotic when really like you know for me like things like TSU it's just a hammer you know it's like I don't have to put all sorts of time and effort into a hammer when I need a hammer it's there I could use it and when I'm done I put it back and you know and that's it it's just I think it, I think the reason TSU works for you so well is because you already have this this beacon called paradigm shift in educational comedy that you have that you are working towards bringing out into the world and into the masses. There is something that you're working towards and TSU is a tool that's helping you build that. So all of your energy is going towards paradigm shift in educational comedy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. But, I, I, so but I've, also, I've also seen people on TSU like have like huge profiles and following that they get real easy and they're doing nothing but like posting pictures of cute kitty cats. Like seriously. Yeah, that's that's I mean, but that's something that's fun for them. That's why they're doing it. But if it's not fun for yeah. people at the same time, like go find something that is fun for you. There's so so many ways of making money in this world. Oh yeah, exactly. But I mean I guess my point is like, you know, TSU like the hammer is just a, a tool for you know, using for what you already do to have fun with. Like, you can use a hammer to build a fence or to create an artistic piece or whatever. You don't have to use a hammer for things you hate doing, for things you don't want to do. You don't have to, you know, go nine to five using this hammer going, I hate what I'm doing with this hammer. It's miserable. It's sufferance. It's, oh, God, I'm going to blame the hammer now. I'm going to just feel mm -hmm. the hammer. It's just... Exactly. Uh, tools, tools are there to do what we choose, you know, to do with them. So, exactly. if someone loves nature and plants or whatever, they could post on TSU about that or whatever. And I've noticed that people don't have these same judgments against Facebook because society has told them Facebook good, Facebook is in with the in crowd. You're somebody if you fucking use Facebook. That's like been enforced. So people don't have these these weird, oh, no, oh, about Facebook, because society said Facebook's where it's at. Facebook's great. You're cool if it's Facebook. But because nobody's putting TSU on that type of pedestal in the mainstream, it's like, oh, my God, I have to feel so victimized by it. You know, kind of like how no, nobody has put Empower Network on a pedestal in the mainstream. So so what's what's happened? They, people who go with Empower see this as, oh, my God, it's this specialized thing that has to drive me crazy. So they're not really seeing Empower Network as a tool. So, you know, it's like they're using Empower Network for, like, it's like using a hammer to try to screw in a screw. That doesn't work. So they're trying to use Empower Network for things that don't even apply to Power Network, and they're driving themselves crazy. Ah! I really just think we have, to, we have to realize that tools are just fucking tools. That's really a okay. basic, simple point. I hear you. I hear you. Let's move on to another topic, shall we? What's going on with you, Rich? Well, yet again, um, besides what I stated earlier, um, just been paying attention a lot to uh, the current standoff going on in eastern Oregon, north, towards the town of Burns, with the movement of armed protesters who are peacefully occupying a federal building right now and no there are no hostages it's just they've taken a building and are you know holding the building until they were they release the uh, <clears throat> release the sentences on two uh, ranchers by the last name of Hammond basically what happened is the BLM um, punished a family of ranchers out in eastern Oregon because they lit, or at least they claimed that they lit some public land on fire. It was probably by accident, or most likely they were clearing brush out of their, you know, back pasture somewhere, and it happened to be right next to some BLM land that was unmarked. It happened to go into the BLM land, and they raised a fuss over it. And essentially now they're facing crimes of arson and, you know, terrorism and all these other different trumped up bullshit charges and basically 
the Bundys, along with a bunch of other protesters, are basically standing against the feds, telling them you're not going to, you know, do anything to these ranchers, you're going to leave them alone, you know, what they did wasn't intentional, et cetera, so on and so forth. That's mainly what I've been paying attention to the last couple of days. And I see. everything else, I pretty much have it explained. Mm -hmm. I think I think that applies to a lot of regular, just normal, everyday situations for people too. I mean, honestly, how many times have have any of us had you know bullies come around and do do just you know really nasty, uncalled for shit, and then you know we don't do anything about it because we think, oh, you know, what can I do anyway? I know recently, Katarina, I'm not going to go into details unless you decide to go there, but I know recently you were in a situation where somebody that you felt very, very bullied by did something incredibly uncalled for, and at first you were even in a position like, oh, maybe I shouldn't even do anything about it, but then all of a sudden you're like kind of slapping your own face, splashing water, going, oh, no, fuck that. I'm going to stand up for myself. And then you <laughs> stood up for yourself, and everybody was like, wow, way to go, Katarina. You stood up for yourself. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And that proved to you that you don't, you know, you don't have to, you know, let dickheads walk all over you just because, oh, that's what you'd always been used to and that's what life has been and blah, blah, blah. That you can take that empowered action and, and you know, and be that change. And you did that just recently and obviously this ranching situ situation is, you know, another example of that. Um, I've really seen a, a lot of examples lately where, you know, people are just saying, hey, you know, I'm tired of the way things have been. I've been afraid of, of standing up for myself and shining my light, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to do that now. And then they start seeing that there's very positive, you know, results because they did that. Because mm -hmm. really, silence is, is consent. And if we're going we're gonna to consent to people screwing us around all the time, then, you know, we're just going to point to that and go, oh, that justifies me telling myself that I'm a victim and I have to be depressed all the time and whatever. So I think there's a lot of people just really moving into their empowerment right now and a lot of females as well. Yeah. Um, I would say I don't have a problem talking about it. Um, I, my Thanksgiving was spent in Oregon and I was um, going to go see my family and uh, I have a very shaky history with my family members, particularly my brothers. And on Thanksgiving Day at dinner, my younger brother came home stoned and decided to act out. And my face was in the line of of the throwing of, of a remote control. So I got a nice black eye right there for a couple days. And um, I was feeling confused and conflicted because I know my brother had spent time in jail before and I didn't want to put him back there at the same time. I also knew that he was completely out of control and completely, um, if completely I recall, off that was, his rocker. That was a double throw with the remote control. It wasn't just your face. It yeah. Was that was extremely but, called for. Yeah, but I, the one that really made the mark was the one on my face. So that's one that I ended yeah. up calling the cops over because... Um, you covered it up well. Good, good makeup job, by the way. I saw that when after it happened, and you like I could barely tell you had like the master makeup job going. Because I'm an artist, I could do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, after it happened, I was wailing and crying and everything because there was just so much um, sadness inside of me that I, I felt almost like, oh, how dare I? He obviously needs help putting him in jail isn't going to help him, blah, 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 blah. And then I realized, you know, that's not actually helping the situation, so I needed to stand up for myself, and I needed to um, be taking a different stance than people had taken before with him. My family members have been very abused by him in the past, and uh, I didn't want to participate in that anymore because he had gotten away with way too much. So... Uh, even though I knew that it was, I had the potential of him never forgiving me, it was something where I had to do the right thing. So, 
Yeah. If any of you, if any of you have ever experienced that, I really encourage you to do the right thing, especially if somebody's being abusive and and victimizing people around you. Uh, yeah. It's not, and it's not something that I did out of hatred or anger, and I want to clarify that. It's not something I did to get revenge. I actually did it with the utmost of love in my heart and, you know, just wanted him to get better and to to resolve the demons that are going on inside of him that are causing him to act out that way, especially since I hadn't done anything to provoke him or trigger him. I just yeah. happened to be the the person in the environment that was the catalyst. Wasn't his girlfriend like texting you and being like, it's no big deal, he beats me all the time, and you're just like, what? Go away, weirdo. Oh, I, he, she didn't say that directly to me, but she said that uh, to someone else that I ended up hearing about it, but yeah, she she was she was very psychologically fucked by the whole thing, and uh, she couldn't fathom the fact that I had the balls to to do that. Yeah, just like so boom. she was very annoyed with me. And but the, how I treated that was I just blocked her calling number because I didn't want to have any conversation with her. She was hysterical, and it and it also had nothing to do with her. As the old saying goes, don't try to debate with a psychopath. That's, you know, it just gets you nowhere. And because you're, and I, I find it especially fitting what I'm about to say now, also because your your family is, um, you know, in Oregon, and, and Richard will know exactly what I mean by what I'm about to say, because he's also in Oregon, too. I'm not saying I personally would do this, or that I would have any harm done to anybody, or, or anything like that, but in my personal opinion, and I say this with all the love in my heart and no hatred, I think that your little brother needs to be beaten with a metal baton. Just saying. That's alright, you know? I... I think that his jail time did him well for a little bit, but I have no interest in uh, going and, like, rousing that one up right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I I just, it'll just be, just, I, I think it'll be really interesting if he ever decides to abuse a girl in public and... Uh, you know, obviously, in, in Oregon especially, you have the right to defend someone else if they're being attacked, and he could end up in a in a rather um, ra rather bad way if he ends up getting too psychopathic and decides to like you know whoop on a girl in public or something. I feel sorry for his girlfriend, but I also understand that a lot of girls do get trapped into that victim mentality of feeling like they deserve it or, or something like that. And welcome back, Rich. How long were you gone? I don't know how long you were froze up. Probably about 15 or 20 seconds. Okay. The, the statement, that, oh. that jab statement, then it, like, dropped. Oh, so you, so you, got, you got that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to be talking more exactly about uh, where I'm going with that in another video that's upcoming called um, a, a Look Back, but that'll be later so everybody else can kind of pause and suspense on that one. But mm -hmm. yeah, anyway, just Katerina, you're making a really great example of how a negative circumstance can be used as a positive opportunity for positive change. Um, it doesn't make you some bastard traitor to defend yourself. And just because, you know, there's some negative contrast coming at you um, does not mean you have to feel, oh, this is the only real reality, I can't do anything about it, da 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 da, -da. And just like how a lot of people, you know, feel that same way about the 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 the, the so-called elites or whatever oh it's also overwhelming look people these guys are nothing but a, a one percent club of grown-ass whiny tantruming little fucking moron retards these are not people you should be afraid of or feel feel victimized by they're just a little minority of of idiots and it, you know if we just kind of collectively take a chill pill and realize our empowerment and focusing on seeing all that negative circumstance as an opportunity for positive change, we can really do some cool, amazing shit with that. You know, we can we can really just use that fertilizer to grow the the garden of a better world. And hopefully that's what a lot of people will be discovering in this year of discovering. Mm -hmm. That they have to sit back and, and be the victim. That they could go, okay, how can I see this as an opportunity instead of a burden? 
How can I take this negative situation and view it as a positive opportunity for positive change? And I think we're going to be seeing a lot of that kind of thing this year. Mm -hmm. Rich, Katarina, anybody have anything else to add about this year being a year of discovery or things that they learned in 2015 that are catapulting you in, into this year or no I think I'm done well I will add on one last note that 2015 was a good catalyst year and taught me how to be uh, more proactive in you know um, multitask oriented um, scenarios taught me how to be a lot calmer gave me a lot of uh, rough you know boot camp sort of lessons for the year to come <clears throat> yeah you've definitely got quite a bit more patience now than you used to say a year ago mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. will attest, I will attest to that mm -hmm. But I used to be one of the most impatient people on the face of this freaking planet, so I totally like know what it's like to be there. Oh, oh, um, seeing as this is um year of discovery anyway, we're on that topic. Um, I, I want to go into um one thing that um me and Katarina always keep forgetting to go into, but now now I'm reminded. Um. Sometimes um, there are people who think that, you know, because like Katarina, you were just, you know, one of my most awesome best friends, that they think that our best friendshipness has just been this cakewalk of, of roses. And they have no idea the rough road upon, you know, which we traveled um, to get to where we are. And, um,. I I mean I've I've told you know the story to friends that have asked and I really want you to tell it because they already get my perspective on it. I mean uh, I've, I've, I've already talked about this though plenty of times in other hangouts. It, I don't think that this is new. Well, and especially seeing as you've you know your new little. Ebook thing or whatever that is is kind of touched on this too. Like, I really think it would be it would be cool for you to elaborate on that. Like, I don't want you to feel like you know pressured or anything, but I think it would be really cool to just have you outline your perspective on you know the how our friendship you know began and you know what we went through you know with that so that you know people can see that it wasn't all roses that we were very reflective to each other. Oh, I thought we were getting off the call, so that's why I'm like, uh, I don't really want to get into that right now, because I feel like that's a whole PSEC episode to itself. But okay. the short and long of it is that, you know, Dave and I had a rocky friendship to start off with, and then he and I went through our battles and our fights and everything, and I came out of it a stronger and happier person, and, you know, he and I ended up having a stronger friendship. I mean, that's really... How it happened. So, I'll definitely agree with that. I guess we can go into more of that another time, as you seem to be really wanting to get out of here. I do, I do. This has been a lot longer than I thought I was going to be on the call. So, okay. Well, I didn't know how much time you had available or whatever. And plus, you're four hours behind me, so it's not quite as late for you as it is for me. So, no, it's not that. It's just I wanted to go to other things today. So. This was very last minute. Well, that's cool. Um, I'm glad that you decided to join us, and it's been a very fun conversation. Yeah. So, love you, appreciate you. Thank you very much for joining us on the very first BSEC episode of 2016. That's definitely a first. I don't think we've ever had you on for, like, the very first one. <laughs> that's awesome. Yep. Well, take care, guys, and I'll talk to y'all later. Yep, and catch you later. See ya. Bye. So, Richard, anything else that um, you want to say as we move into the process of wrapping this thing up? Nothing that I can add.
No, I think everything I've said for the year ahead have pretty much stated. We're not going to add shit if you're using Common Core math. Two plus seven does not equal elephants because aliens, my god. You're the one who's using it, not me. I didn't I'm just using simple arithmetic. That was invented before Common Core. <laughs> Common Core is a Frankenstein invention. Mm -hmm. It's alive, and we really wish it wasn't. Oh, look, Windows 10. We finally made it right. <laughs> I love that picture. It's just the picture of the computer the jet airplane with everything in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. All right. If anybody wants to see that, they could probably just do a Google image search for Windows 10. We finally got it right, or something similarly worded, and it'll probably. Come up. But, um, yeah. He will be right back, and um, there's not really really much I, I have left to say on this that I can think of. I guess now we're just waiting for his return to end the hangout. In the meantime, I'm just trying to think and see if there's anything that... I wanted to say, just so later, I'm not like, oh, damn, I wanted to say that, but I forgot, shit. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not really thinking of anything. Nothing coming to mind here. Although I guess seeing as he already said he has nothing left to add anyway, I guess I can kind of wrap this up then. So thank you everybody for watching, and um, I'm just really looking forward to uh, this next year, 2016, what it's, what it's going to bring. And hope everybody has a really good day, night, you know, whatever it is in your neck of the woods. So um, catch y'all later. Peace out.